Hey, hi, Halloween! Did you know that there are some Pokémon that were previously human? You must carry around the faces that they once had when they were a human. Apparently a boy randomly turned into a Kadabra. Heck, Spiritomb is 108 human spirits stuck on a rock! And then there's Phantump, a ghost grass type that is said to be a rotten tree stump possessed by the spirit of a child who died while lost in the forest. Their leaves can also be boiled to cure any illness. Yes, Dreadspread, apparently they can. It makes you wonder though, children who died while lost in the forest? Are we talking any forest or a specific THE forest? What if there is no forest and therefore no tree stump to possess? What happens to the spirits of those kids? We took a look at this very idea last year, exploring what would happen if a child ended up dying in somewhere other than a forest. What would those phantom end up looking like? And that is the question we're gonna answer today. In regards to the criteria of these designs, the two rules that we had were, one, the child must die in a known location where children often get lost, and two, the possessed object used for Phantom's head must be reflective of said location. So, for example, if a child were to die in a forest, the Phantom's head is a tree stump. But if they died at a shopping center, then the Phantom's head would be a carrier bag. Or if they were pecked to death by chickens, the Phantom's head would be a giant egg. What? <laughs> egg boy. Going back in the first rule though, there is something we missed. The Pokemon world has one major difference to the world that we live in. Kids leave home at 10 years old or younger to wander through the wilderness alone. All of these kids are lost. This opened up our options dramatically, and the rest was plain sailing. If the kids are supervised by their parents, then they aren't lost. If they were being looked after, they wouldn't be dead now, would they? Like take Red for instance. Guy's 10 years old, leaves home, takes down a major crime syndicate, becomes the Pokemon League champion, and then decides to go train on the peak of Mount Silver, where he can be battled in the Johto games. Now, being realistic, pretty much every region has some sort of icy area, and absolutely none of the protagonists prepare themselves beforehand by dressing warm. Red becomes the champion and goes off to train, sure, but he just stands on top of Mount Silver in a t-shirt. Pal, I know you won the Pokemon League and all, but that doesn't make you immortal. Yes, I know the later games have options for trainer customization, but none of that's required to head into freezing cold areas. So as you can guess, our first Phantom variant is a child who froze to death. As for its head adornment, people like to make snowmen when they get the opportunity, so you could realistically imagine some of these snowy routes being full of them. So what if, suddenly, their snowman's head pops off as they encounter freezing Phantom, the ghost ice type? Chilling. Look at that fake smile though. If they brought back seasons, I can imagine this little guy becoming a rare encounter in winter. <laughs> what an implication that would be. You know what else is common in the winter months? Smog. When it's cold, smoke from chimneys tends to have difficulty rising, and when combined with general fog, makes smog. That nasty haze that can make it difficult to breathe and cause minor health issues. So if the stuff coming out of the chimney is that bad, what would it be like inside them? Well. Wouldn't you know that children used to clean chimneys, I believe back in the 1500s, and of course they would die, either through dire health complications from all the soot, or slipping, injuring themselves, and getting stuck up there. There are a lot of chimneys in Galar, that's for sure. Obviously it's been hundreds of years since this bizarre practice, so you can imagine that Sweeping Phantom would be an extremely rare encounter, like Valcarona levels of rare, where they could just be hiding in some random basement. Ghost Poison makes the most sense for this little guy, with Soot being toxic and all. It could also absolutely create poison dust clouds with that chimney sweep tail, either to attack or escape. Wasn't this guy a rock or fire type last year? Yeah, I was undecided. But chimneys don't contain fire, the fireplaces do. You know what else contains fires? Go on. Forest fires! There are plenty of forests in the Pokemon world, and what's stopping them from going ablaze? The Jagged Pass is covered in trees and is located on the side of Mount Chimney, an active volcano. Regular Phantom is already the spirit of a child who died while lost in a forest, so to set that forest on fire instead, and boom, you get Torched Phantom, the ghost fire type. You could probably find these guys in post-burnt forests. Very spooky areas. They'd fit right in. Speaking of getting lost in forests, what actually kills the child that results in regular Phantom? Starvation? Stupidity, or something else. An army full of bees, perhaps? You know, you got a point. Combi aren't immediately threatening. However, Vespaquen is a whole other story. I mean, if we go off of its Legends Arceus deck entry, it commands its subjects to build its hive, it will dispatch any interlopers who dare sneak into its nest and use them as nourishment for itself. 
So it eats the child. It seems like it. I mean, the goddamn queen is three foot eleven, and that's not including alphas, meaning that it's gotta have a huge hive, which a lost child could presumably stumble across and maybe even sneak into for shelter. So Vespaquen kills the child, eats body, and their spirit possesses the beehive. That's what I was thinking. However, the Vespaquen hive itself would probably be way too big. In fact, I believe the hive is actually made out of combi themselves. So what if, what if the spirit of the child could possess just a few combi? I mean, they're already primed for taking orders. What mental defense would they even have against possession? They could form a helmet of sorts for the spirit, allowing Swarm Phantom to use Vespaquen's signature order moves, sending out various combi from its living headpiece. That actually sounds pretty cool. It's about time Shedinja got a friend. You know, according to all known laws of aviation, there's no way combi should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its hexagonal little body off the ground. Combi, of course, flies anyway, because they don't care what humans think is impossible. Is this a flying type segue? Yes! So, ghost flying type. Skydiving accident? I was thinking this, but legally you have to be over 18 years old to skydive, so that's unlikely. How about simply dying at altitude, or via helium poisoning? So you're telling me that your voice can repeatedly keep getting higher and higher until it kills you? Not quite, but for the sake of argument, let's say yes. Obvious possession item here is a balloon, but that's just way too similar to Drifloon. What about a balloon animal? That's actually not a bad shout. Kids love these things. Floating Phantom never looked better. Makes you wonder though, dying at altitude? How high does that measure go? Like if the kid were to die in space, does that count as a floating Phantom? Or does the kid become something else altogether? How's a kid gonna die in space? Wait a minute. Yeah. So as outrageous as this seems, the whole Delta episode of Aorus has you, a child, riding Mega Rayquaza into space to deal with a meteor containing Deoxys. Let's say, for argument's sake, that somehow you fully wipe this battle. The classic blacked out scurry to Pokemon Center excuse shouldn't work here. You're in fucking space. You are fucked. <laughs> Starry Phantom is born from such ludicrous occasions, probably being one of the rarest variants around. Its head has possessed a star. Look, I know that stairs are humongous balls of gas, but this is a fantasy setting. Kids ain't gonna be ended up in space in the first place. Plus, the psychic type is tied to the cosmos. It looks like a shooting stair. It's all G. Did you know that shooting stars sometimes crash into the Earth? Uh-huh. Earth as in the ground? How could a child be killed by the very ground itself? Well, what about being buried alive? Or being crushed by a collapsing sand tunnel? Maybe by eating sand? That was something that I did my first time at the beach, although you'd have to be truly shoveling down the stuff for it to actually kill you. The other issue with all of these was that there was no immediate object for the spirits to put on their heads. Sand doesn't exactly have a tangible shape on its own, but what if it took a certain form? Sandcastles are covered by the already existing ghost ground sandy gas line, so it seemed like we had a bit of a Drifloon situation again. Then I thought of an actual danger in the desert. Dust devils. Tiny desert tornadoes that are usually harmless, but can be quite dangerous at larger sizes. Wait, wouldn't that make it a flying type? Dust devils are half wind, half sand. It's 50-50. An easy excuse here is that the ghost typing provides the gusts. Ominous wind is a ghost type move after all. Of course, Dusty Phantom would have little devil features. Not evil though. That's for the dark type. So obviously thinking about ways of dying, the dark type does sit right on that line where things could start becoming a little bit heavy. I mean, we've had and still will have quite a range of deaths to go throughout this video, so it is important to make sure that none of them cross that line. An easy way to get around this is Dark Type is generally ruthless Pokemon, but it also encompasses literal darkness, the absence of light. What do humans do when it's dark? We go to sleep. In which, you guessed it, death is possible. Snoozing Phantom just yanks the pillow from the very bed where it died. It's always sleeping, maybe even having comatose for its ability, even having its body take on that classic zzzz iconography. That made a lot more sense in the script, didn't it? Yeah. Look, it's cute and all, but it's kind of encroaching on my territory. I guess I'll allow it. For now. It's a good thing I have the type advantage versus this guy if things got rough. Speaking of getting rough... So fighting was also in the same camp as Dark, and there's really no other way to get around it. Death via physical force. That's all I'm gonna say. Pummel's Phantom would be pissed possessing a punching bag and having its own little boxing glove as a tail. It makes you wonder, would the gym owners understand what happened to their equipment? Is there a reserve of punching bags just in case these spirits need to possess them? That's a whole other can of worms. Also that gyms and Pokemon have no equipment of any kind. Everyone trains outside, getting that nice summer beach pod. So kids dying at the beach, huh? Jaws called. Makes sense. Legends Arceus style. Run into the water. Sharpedo attacks. Boom. Drowned Phantom. 
This works similarly to how Slowbro and Shelder do, with the child's spirit becoming the body and the fish Pokemon transforming into the skeletal helmet. Poor guy just wanted a snack. Well, it's a pity that fish don't have their own supermarkets, eh? We mentioned this little guy earlier, but how absolutely ridiculous would it be for a child to get lost in a shopping center, a heavily frequented area daily, surrounded by people and food on all sides, yet somehow they still succumb to neglect and die. It's just stupid enough to work. Carrier Phantom says hi for the third year in a row. Would the type of shop matter? What if it were an electronic shop? Or a hardware store, for instance? Well, I mean, all shops sell carrier bags. The good ones, anyway. But one variant I could imagine finding in a hardware store is what we decided on for the steel type. This confused me for a bit. Obvious things here might have been being stabbed to death or possessing a suit of armor. But these are both very common things that the steel type often relies on. I wanted to get weird with it. A pretty genuine factor of health complications and death and not that long ago, all things considered, was actually caused by inhaling the fumes from paint. Lead-based paint. Lead is a metal, and metal is covered by the steel type. Buckethead boy! With a little paint quiff and all. Painted Phantom would also be one of the rarer ones. Hey, maybe the paint could come in different colors. Adding a list of dead children to your list of dead children. A treasure hunt for different paint colors? Hmm. Treasure hunt. So what's to say that in the history of the Pokemon world, pirates didn't exist? What if, simply, a child crewmate dies, and the spirit, looking for the nearest piratey object, possesses the very booty itself. An ass? No, the treasure chest, you fuck. A literal mimic chest fake mon is something that I've dabbled with before. And I think that it's such a societal trope that it'd be a shame not to include it. Treasure Phantom is dragon type. Of course it is. Dragons are typically very greedy and protective of wealth, just like pirates. And honestly, what other tangible object could even reflect the dragon typing? This variant could be so rare, maybe even one of a kind, having the legendary status. Very greedy indeed. Reminds me of myself during the holidays. And I see you eating all that cheese. And cheese is a food. And fairy is the food type, right? Exactly. So what are you saying? The kid gets eaten? No, dad. Similar to our shopping center friend, this kid gets lost at the carnival. Now, the odds of dying here are extremely low. But once it's happened, there are so many whimsical things that could adorn their head. Like candy floss? Exactly! Flossed phantom is exactly that. Adorning a puffy, sugary head. Yeah, we call it candy floss. Elsewhere it's called cotton candy, but its original name was fairy floss. So fairy type it is. Would the sugar crystallize under certain conditions? Like rock candy? I get it, don't worry. A rock type is crystal phantom. Easy one here. They get lost and die in a cave, and their spirit possesses a geode. Huh. Little guy tried to play Minecraft in real life and ended up becoming a literal geode dude. Yep. It's even got the pickaxe for a tail and all. And the geode also forms a feature resembling a mining helmet. You know, because it's a miner miner. It's been a while since children worked in mines. Society has had many major improvements. People now use torches instead of lanterns. Electricity is everywhere. And, quite understandably, could kill a child. Electrocution. It's as easy as that. Most regions have kids running around unsupervised within power plants, for God's sake. They haven't taken the necessary safety training. So boom, zap, dead. And then their spirit could just yank an electrical transformer out of somewhere important. Shocked Phantom can't believe you'd accuse them of such a thing. They're literally shocked. So that's it. There you have it. A Phantom of every type. You got what you asked for. Well, uh, there's two things. Go on. I only count 17 Phantom, but there's 18 types. Okay, right, true. And I may have traded our Phantom while you weren't looking. Oh, God! Shocked Phantom, when exposed to a thunderstone, will evolve into Revergize. Like Trevenant mimicking trees, this colossal cretin silently positions itself at night, siphoning off power from existing pylons, causing all sorts of power outages and blackouts. You wouldn't find them hanging out near those wooden pylons, though. They'd stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Gardinal! You don't even belong here! <laughs> All I'm saying is if we cut down on the visual references, it could really help with branding. You know, make it our own thing. Um... Did you just throw them into space? Yes. Speaking of which, they probably passed by some starry phantom. That is true. 
If you happen to have this kind of phantom in your party and have it react to a meteor, the same way Deoxys can, it'll evolve into Revenant. Oh yeah, this is big brain time. While boasting a tough exterior, it prefers to fight at a distance. That said, it is an asteroid, so expect the occasional meteor mash or two. Just look at those fists! It is kinda rocky looking to be fair. Speaking of, Crystal Phantom, if leveled up within a cave, will evolve into Cave in Event. Cave in Event? Like cave in event? <laughs> yes. This guy will disguise itself as a lustrous geode cave, blocking off cave pathways. Don't be fooled or alarmed, as their lustrous draws are only effective once you step inside. It would definitely add some replayability and diversity while revisiting caves. Did you know that geodes are formed from lava? Mm-hmm. And so is heat. Obviously. Torched Phantom, quite predictably, reacts to a firestone. Once exposed, they will evolve into Wickavent. Whoa, an actual wicker man? Complete with screaming faces made of soul fire. This one is definitely one of the more unapologetically human shaped, but I mean like, it's a wicker man. It kinda had to be. How delicious. Wait, a wicker man? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Oh. Bees indeed! Swarm Phantom will evolve when given honey, becoming Beevenant. For all those clamoring for a masculine Vespaquen alternative, here you go. But if only there were a way to evolve your male combi into this guy. Uh, I guess the struggle goes on. This guy's wings don't work, so it scuffles around like a Beyblade? Maybe it could still participate in sky battles though. My god, remember those? If Floating Phantom is leveled up during a sky battle, it'll evolve into Revenflight. I'm not even gonna comment on this. Guy literally became a balloon animal. It's definitely one of the goofier fellas, and distinct enough from Driftblim to not cause any issues. It makes you wonder, does it deflate when it faints? I guess it's the flying type because it passes wind. Ha ha ha. Well look, at least it's not stinky, unlike toxic soot. Sweeping Phantump, when exposed to a certain amount of soot gathered in the soot sack, will evolve into Santump. The literal nightmare before Christmas. This cretin can be found hiding atop rooftops, probably delivering coal to children. They'd probably show up more in the winter months, alongside another frosty fiend. Freezing Phantom, when given an ice stone, evolves into Revy Yeti. Mans became so thick that not even their own legs could hold them. I'm definitely thinking Snow Warning is this guy's ability, disguising its approach under the cover of hail. Or how about thick fat, actually? It'll take more than a few fire-type moves to melt this guy. When ice melts, it becomes water. And Drowned Phantom, if leveled up whilst underwater, will evolve into Nathanland. The boniest bony fish that ever boned. Imagine, if you will, Legends Arceus style, seeing an alpha one of these guys deep beneath the waves. Not a chance. This guy could definitely take down a pirate ship. Speaking of, many pirates died at sea. Maybe a few of the kids that fell off the boat became Drowned Phantom, but the few that died amongst the loot became Treasure Phantom. Let me guess, you give it a big nugget? And it'll evolve into Revan Gold, one of the rarest Pokemon. It holds a massive amount of wealth, using its coin-like scales to blend seamlessly amongst its horde, dispatching treasure hunters before they even notice it. That's a whole lot of gold, which is a metal, so... Painted Phantom could maybe evolve using a shiny stone, or maybe perhaps when leveled up within a special magnetic field. The end result is Reveroller. Wait a second, why does paint become a steamroller? Well, paint cans and the rollers are both cylindrical, and paint can be applied by using a paint roller, which in Reveroller's case, it can also use to crush its opponents. Not before it coats it with paint from its groovy hairdo. It's definitely one of the weirder mods I've ever made. You're forgetting about someone? Of course not. Leveling up Carrier Phantom, while within a department store, will earn you a trolley vent. This guy was Steel-type last year, right? Yeah, and I always felt bad having the OP Ghost Normal combo evolve into the less OP Ghost Steel-type. So, now we get both. Take trolley from shopping. You can buy groceries, toys, candy. Flossed Phantom, when leveled up with high friendship, will evolve into... What the hell is that? Out of this house! Out of this house! This is fucked! Yeah, I know. What, are they called Mantump? I was thinking more Mr. Crime. Yeah, clowns are absolutely terrifying, so why not reference the classic Pokemon clown, Mr. Mime? Guy might be a mime in name, but just give him a nose and that is 100% a clown. Clowns are demonic. Speaking of demonic... Dusty Phantom, when spun around similarly to Alchemy, while also holding the soft sand, will evolve into Revolvent. Holy moly, this guy is awesome. It speedily charges through the desert, it hits like a truck. I imagine they could be a similar encounter to the genies from Legends Arc. Don't talk to me about those genies! 
Oh, evil game developers. It's okay. Take a breather. Evil type. Dark type. Leveling up Snoozing Phantom at night will evolve it into Revenith, the literal monster under your bed. As Snoozing Phantom was conceptualized under the absence of light, this evolution is darker than the rest. Literally being part bed, part incomprehensible shadow. The literal boogeyman, you know? The monster under your bed is- There's only room for one bedman here, pal! You wanna go? Pummel's Phantom will evolve when... Leveled up within a league setting? Within a gym challenge or the Pokemon League. It's kinda niche, but I think it could work. Ringvenant is ready for battle, brandishing big hammer hands and constantly on edge and rattled due to its clanging noggin. Talk about a ringing headache. Okay, well that's all the phantoms and their respective evolutions, but what else were we missing? Oh yeah, pure ghost type. Okay, let's see. It's okay, don't worry about it. Let's just give it a spooky hat and call it a day. Happy Halloween! Thank you for watching this the whole way through. Big thank you to my patrons Joy and Blighty for helping me flesh out a lot of these ideas. And big thank you to Blighty specifically for inspiring me with their fairy type phantom variant. Which was inspired by last year's phantom video, which has now ended up inspiring this year's phantom video. Ah, the vicious cycle. What could this year's fan art inspire? Thank you everybody for all the fan art submissions. You can send those to me on Twitter, Instagram, Discord. Feel free to tag me. If I don't see them, then I can't include them. All of those links are in the description, as well as a link to Bludgeon, who I must thank for their quick cameo. If you want more context for whatever that was, be sure to go check out his channel. With all that said, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. And I've been DBUs and all the boo. Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> Heh <laughs>